Mig's Izo Novel Productions presents Massacre in Mermaid World, an original story written and conceived by author Mig's Izo, aka Miguel Isaac. Edited by Maria Kieran. Animated subtitles by Joshua Noble. Original soundtracks composed by Mig's Izo. Recorded by Elijah Kay and Solomon Willow. Narrated by Jeff Martin. And powered by God Most High. And now, Massacre in Mermaid World. My name is Christian. I had four best friends, Dave, James, and Paul. We were all married men. They had children, but me I didn't, how could I if I were barren? Now listen to this, it happened right at that time, that we caught our wives cheating on us. It was so strange that it happened to us all in the same week. So what we did was to have some time off from our families, and go to sail the Mermaid Ocean, and also visit Silent Island. Mermaid Ocean was called so, why, because many sailors claimed that they had seen some mermaids swimming past their boats. Silent Island was called so, why, because no living soul ever inhabited the island. Anyways, the four of us got to that ocean and when we were in the middle of it, a certain ocean monster I later knew as Crab Octomate attacked us, tore our boat into pieces, and fell us into the cold night waters. We floated on the surface, but very soon, one by one we were pulled underneath the waters only for giant foams of blood to come back to the ocean surface. All my friends didn't survive. Me I managed to somehow escape from the monster, and got onto a very tiny island, the size of a car. Listen to this, even though I had survived, but I was so wounded, and so much blood had flowed out of me, that before I died, I first fainted. When I woke up from my faint state, I found that my head was lying on something. It was scaly, yet smooth. It was a giant body of a fish. When I turned my head up, I found the upper half of a human being, and then a female human face, I swear the most beautiful of faces I had ever seen. It was a mermaid. All the tales that the sailors had about Mermaid Ocean were real. Look, the mermaid I found told me that if I didn't accept to be turned into a mermaid, I was definitely going to die. Turning me into a mermaid was the only way she was ever going to save my life. And indeed she did, with one beautiful kiss, my body was wrapped in this outlandish light, and the next thing was for my wounds to be sewn away, then my legs melted and stuck together, and the next thing was a flurry of scales flying onto it, until it became like that of a mermaid's. I had become one of them. I was no longer Sailor Christian, but Mermaid Christian, and her the mermaid that had kissed me into a mermaid, was called Mermaidrin. Now that very night deep down in Mermaid Ocean, Mermaidrin led me to what I later knew as Mermaid Kingdom. You won't believe me when I say that Mermaid Kingdom was the heaven of the sea. It was really eye-catching. I'm telling you that while there, you just wouldn't stop gopping, you just wouldn't help turning your head a million times to behold all the amazing things that were down there. Mermaidrin couldn't help laughing at me as almost everything caught my attention. Beautiful mermaids of all kinds were swimming about in indescribable joy. Their tails were of different colors, red, pink, green, silver, to mention but a few. I noticed that some had glowing eyes, and some had glowing tails. I asked Mermaidrin why it was so, and she told me that the ones with glowing eyes were the top guards of Mermaid Kingdom, and that the ones with glowing tails were the kingdom's doctors and nurses. She also added this that so long as you were a mermaid, there was a power, like a special ability in you. Mermaidrin told me that the mermaid guards, the ones with glowing eyes had the ability to look right into the future, and see what was gonna happen before it happened, and so their very special power could not earn them any other better position than to be the kingdom guards. She also told me that the glowing-tailed mermaids had the special power of healing in their tails, and it's that power that bright in their tails that glowed, and so with their special power, they automatically had to be Mermaid Kingdom's health workers. When she had told me all that, I asked her, Mermaidrin, what's your power? She turned to face me with her angelic face, as we slowly swum into the kingdom, then she said, my power is nature conversion. When she had said that, I quickly swum slightly ahead of her then turned to meet her face, and I was like, what in the mermaid world does a power called nature conversion is, and how does it work, anyway? She had this as an answer, saying, nature conversion is the power I used on you, when I found you bleeding to death on that island. 
Look, Sailor Christian, with that power, I turn mermaids into humans, and humans into mermaids. Mermaidrin's power was by far the best, and she was the only mermaid with that power. Really converting nature sounded so much super cool to my ears. Listen, Mermaidrin had turned me into a mermaid, yet she was still referring to me as Sailor Christian. And besides all that, if all the mermaids had a certain power, then what was mine since I had now become a mermaid? There's obviously only one mermaid that automatically must have had an answer to that, and that was no other than Mermaidrin. So I asked her, Mermaidrin, what's my power? But she had no answer to that other than a bland I don't know. She said that I had all the time to discover it on my own, like how every mermaid down here in Mermaid World had done. We continued swimming, and there's this something I had noticed. Fellow mermaids were making respective gestures for Mermaidrin, and I was wondering why. Why are they making all those gestures for you? Is it that you're some respectable mermaid down here or what? No, I'm just as ordinary as all the mermaids you've seen, and those gestures you've seen them make, are just part of the mermaid communication ways. She told me all that, but she was only lying to me, she was no ordinary person in Mermaid Kingdom. And this is how I knew what she really was in this kingdom. We slowly swum with her, and she led me to some building, and there we swum into this one room, where she kept me for a while. She then moved out and left me there all alone, as I moved my eyes over all the luxuries that were inside there, the historical portraits, so on and so forth. Now while I was doing that, a certain mermaid swum into the room, actually she just happened to take shape right in the middle of the room. But that didn't surprise me at all, because I already knew that at least every mermaid down here had a certain power in her, and that for this mermaid which had just appeared was the power of disappearance and appearance. Be attentive to this. This mermaid was calling out Princess Mermaidrin, Princess Mermaidrin, where are you? Look, I had taken cover somewhere she couldn't see me. Now listen. What I had thought before was very right. Mermaidrin was no ordinary mermaid. She was the Princess of Mermaid World. Did you hear that? She was Princess of Mermaid World. Now I knew that I had been saved from death on that island, actually not only that but also turned into a mermaid by a princess mermaid. I wondered why she didn't want me to know that she was a princess. Anyways, as this mermaid, that had magically appeared into the room where I was, continued calling her, Mermaidrin, or now Princess Mermaidrin walked right in. And then this other mermaid, whom I later knew as Mermaid Deborah, turned to her saying, the queen sent me to call you, and she's quite worried. Then Princess Mermaidrin was like, how did you find me? I used the help of Mermaid Derek. She answered with a smile. Look here, Mermaid Derek was this one mermaid who could locate where every mermaid was at any time. As they were still saying stuff to themselves from where I was hiding, something happened to prick me in my rib side, and it's that which made me jump out of my hideout, and in so doing, Mermaid Deborah, who wasn't supposed to see me, saw me. Straight away, she was like, Princess Mermaidrin, who's this? Are you sneaking with some boy or what? Mermaid Deborah, will you keep your voice low? That was Princess Mermaidrin. He's not my boyfriend. Come here, let me tell you this. She grabbed hold of her hand and they swum over there near the door. He's a sailor. Princess Mermaidrin told her, and continued on saying this, I found him dying there on the island, and had no choice but to turn him into a mermaid. You mean you just turned yet another sailor into a mermaid? But remember the queen had prohibited you from doing just that. Then Princess Mermaidrin had to come in begging, please promise me you won't even breathe a word to my mom. But before even Mermaid Deborah could make her promise to her, the mermaid queen, of course Princess Mermaidrin's mom walked into the room. She was all along outside the room overhearing their conversations. The next thing was this meeting her in her of course magistral living room, where she was seated with King Mermaid on their thrones. They didn't like it, I mean all that thing of her turning yet another sailor into a mermaid, and they wanted to kick me out of the kingdom that I go make stay who knows where. Mum, you just can't chase him away like that. He hasn't even lasted in Mermaid Kingdom for barely ten hours, how do you expect him to survive out there all alone with all the dangerous creatures that abound therein? That all was Princess Mermaidrin pleading for me. 
but even though she gave them all the convincing reasons for them not to chase me away, they had made up their minds, they had come to a decision, I just had to go. So the guards grabbed hold of me, and started drag swimming me away, as Princess Mermaidron cried all the tears out of her eyes, fighting off some guards, but they were so powerful for her. That night, I was going to be thrown into the large ocean all by myself, if it wasn't this. Remember, I told you earlier on that the mermaid guards were those special kind of mermaids who had glowing eyes, and had the ability to see future events. So as they were dragging me away, they happened to stop all at once, and it was like they had been put under some sort of trance. They were seeing into the future, and just after 50 seconds, they left back in action. Everyone there knew that if the guards made that sudden stop in their motion, it meant that they had seen something in future, and that always meant danger. So it was King Mermaid to ask first, saying, Mermaid guards, what have you seen in the future? Something worse, the head guard continued, saying, the monster, Crab Optimate, knows our new location, and he's coming right at us. Just at the mention of that monster, the king almost staggered from his throne, and everyone else in the kingdom twisted his face from fright. It was like they all knew what it meant if Crab Optimate got into a mermaid habitant. Listen, Crab Optimate was the monster that had taken my life through hell when I was on the ocean surface before Princess Mermaidron had found me so as to turn me into a mermaid. Sadly, that Crab Optimate monster had slaughtered my best friends, that's Dave, James, and then Paul. It could have killed me as well, but then the too much blood that had come out of my friends, and also some big cuts that the thing had already cut into me, attracted a company of sharks. It's them that kept it busy, and even though they were no match for it, but at least they created some window for me to escape. Why was it called Crab Octomate was because it had a giant octopus head that was the size of a bungalow house, and had eight sets of eyes, four in front, and four behind. The other thing was that it had for an abdomen, was dozens and dozens of giant tentacles the size of the Eiffel Tower, and they ended in crab-like arms. One last dangerous feature of it was its mouth which was a base of a thousand canines. Anyways, when the king learned the trouble that was coming at them, he ordered for guards to bring him his most trusted mermaids, the location changers. The location changers were these not so many mermaids with the power to change any building's location to some other location within the ocean, and this was how Mermaid Kingdom was able to survive Crab Octomate for so long. Every time that the guards saw the future that that hideous monster was coming at them, they would simply inform the location changers, and they would make disappear the whole kingdom to another location. But this time round, the location changers couldn't manage doing what they were best at. They tried to make the whole kingdom disappear, but they just couldn't, and nobody knew why it was like that. The king was like to the mermaid guards, how long will it take for Crab Octomate to find us? Your Majesty, never has it happened before, but this time round, we couldn't see how long it could take for it to get to us. Sir, that means it could be just moments from now, actually any time, it could even be now. That was the head guard giving all the bad news to the king, and to make matters worse just as he had finished saying that screams chaos, and what have you were heard coming from the further parts of the kingdom. What the hell was that? The king was like that, and the head guard answered back in a somewhat dark voice, saying, Crab Octomate is already here. Everything started shaking within the kingdom. In the further parts of the kingdom, the water there was turning red from innocent mermaid blood, all by Crab Octomate's vicious tentacles with jagged surfaces. Crab Octomate was putting to death every living mermaid that he set on his eighth set of eyes. Back in the kingdom's hall, the guards were coming up with strategies to discipline the killing creature, but every strategy that they used was only as effectless as a single crystal of sugar in a bucket of water. I swear to you, they used all they had, including their magical powers to bring down the monster, Crab Octomate, but nothing, it was like their doomsday was right this night. All they had to do was to just look on, as the thing came killing for its way up to the center of the kingdom. But before all that would happen, the head guard had yet another vision. In his vision, he said to the king that I was the only person with the power that was going to help them defeat the thing. But really, how was I ever going to do that? I hardly even had any experience. The king then called me to him. 
Sailor Christian, he then bowed before me, please, if you got any power inside you that the guards have seen in you, please and please, help us. When all the many mermaids that had crowded in the hall, saw that their so respectable king was bowing before me, they all one by one, two by two, twenty by twenty, went down on their knees and begged me. I then spoke to them, saying, I can't be the one to save you, mermaid kingdom, because I don't even know what my power is, I've only been a mermaid for five to six hours. They told me to just think harder, I did just that but still no power at all. I won't lie to you, but I made all the kind of gestures that there was in the mermaid world, seeking that I might evoke that so special power in me, but nothing. When I saw that nothing was working, and that they were all looking up to me to save them from the monster, Crab Octomate which was bleaching the ocean with mermaid blood, I knelt down and said a little prayer. And as I said the prayer, I had them say a lot of hopeless statements, the likes of he's not going to help us, we are all gonna have our innocent blood spread out in the ocean. But that just didn't stop me, I continued with my prayer to God, and that's when I felt something turn within my brain. It was an idea, but it felt more like a very real idea, like a 3D idea in my head. I quickly walked to Princess Mermaidron, the special one with the nature conversion powers. I asked her, have you ever turned a mermaid into anything else apart from a human being? She replied a big no. Then I told her, let me be the first try and turn me into a mirror image of that monster, Crab Octomate. No, I just can't do that. Princess Mermaidron didn't want to do that to me, she was afraid she would lose me. It's okay. Everything will be fine, just try your level best and see that I turn into that thing. So in a lot of tears, she walked up to me, and even though her parents were very present, and the rest of the surviving mermaids, she gave me what I would call a delicious mermaid kiss, the longest kiss I had ever had from a mermaid, moreover a princess mermaid. And as our lips separated from each other's, she romantically whispered, I love you, Sailor Christian. And obviously I had to whisper back, I love you most, Princess Mermaidron. After saying that, I stood before her, and I waited for her to summon her much great power. But before she could do just that, I told her that once she had done that, then she would also lead all the others with her up to the ocean surface, and if need be, she would convert them all into humans, and go start a human life on Silent Island. I stepped back, and I waited for power to come from her, and change my DNA. I closed my eyes, as she spread out her hands towards me, and a stream of a never-seen-before power came out of her and unto me. Her power created a whirlpool around me, and in it, I got sucked, and was seen no more. Princess Mermaidron knew that worst had happened to me. She knew it that I had died, because she had never ever turned a mermaid into something else other than a human being, and so she cried buckets. Everybody was really sad, and at the same time worried, and petrified, reason being that the monster, Crab Octomate, had come killing mermaids, and spreading their blood in the blue ocean, as it led to the center of Mermaid Kingdom, where the rest of the surviving mermaids, including the Mermaid King and Queen were. They were all hearing how Crab Octomate was taking down the last of the mermaid guards and was now only three doors away from them. Listen to this, when mermaids are out of options, totally cornered by threat to an extent of only waiting for death, they hold each other's hands, all of them. In so doing, they were ready that if it was death, then it would take them down as a whole, and in that way, they would think that they died in unity. Therefore, that's exactly what they did. Starting from the king, to the queen, to the so much weeping princess mermaidron, and to the rest. The monster, Crab Octomate was just one door away, and already the interiors of the kingdom's panic room were all tremulous from the vibrations that came as a result of Crab Octomate tearing down the kingdom's pillars. Now as they were inside there in the panic room with their eyes squeezed shut they all over a sudden perceived this an unexpected silence. It was more like Crab Octomate had stopped tearing the kingdom apart, and that he was going away from the it. Every mermaid was stunned, thinking, what was really going on out there? And it was then that a certain mermaid guard came into the panic room, seemingly bearing good news, saying, Your Majesty, there's another creature looking exactly as Crab Octomate, and it's fighting the monster away from the kingdom. They all couldn't believe. If really out there was another creature keeping Crab Octomate busy, then where had it come from? Princess Mermaidron then remembered. That's Sailor Christian. 
the nature conversion power worked, his idea worked. There and then, bright smiles came back, and graced all the mermaid's faces, and it's at that moment Princess Mermaidron remembered what I had told her, and that was to lead all the mermaids up to the ocean's surface, as in my new monster form, fought off Crab Octomade. So they all swam away following Princess Mermaidron's lead, and as they went, they saw my monster form in a distance, exchanging vicious attacks to each other. And this is a little bit of how our fight was. The mermaid slayer, the monster, Crab Octomate, was really taken aback when it saw another creature that looked exactly like it and was busy muscling it down. What that monster didn't know, was that it was a work of Princess Mermaidron's nature conversion power that had converted me exactly into it. He didn't know that it was me Sailor Christian, the one whose sweet friends, he had killed. I was back in monster form to avenge the blood of my brothers Dave, James, Paul, and not only them, but also the other so many mermaids that had lost their lives to it. Now Crab Octomate swung his giant jagged surface tentacle towards my giant octopus head, but I quickly saw it, and swung up, then grabbed hold of that tentacle with four of mine, tearing it to threads. Crab Octomate screamed as a result, he hadn't gotten any creature that had harmed him that much, not until this night when he found his match, and not just his match but a mirror image of it. It then dart swum forwards to me, and it opened its canine crowded mouth and bit into some of my tentacles. I also screamed at that, I pounded its head, but the thing wasn't letting its mouth off my them. What was I supposed to do? I then realized that his head was left also exposed, his eyes is what I targeted. I tore into them, and that's when the thing let go of me, it swum away from me in so much pain, as much alien blood poured out of the now just big wounds where the eyes were. Hear this, out of its eight set of eyes, I had managed, in just that short time to tear out four sets of eyes, he had only remained with one set. I saw that Crab Octomate wanted to take to flight but that I was never going to allow, for vengeance was what was running through my veins. With now only four sets of eyes, Crab Octomate's vision wasn't as clear as when he had eight sets of eyes, he was just guessing the way, and this is where I had a chance to beat the lights out of him. I dart swung to it, grabbed hold of his big head with my many tentacles as him, with his tentacles also, madly cut into mine, and the pain was too much for me, but I wasn't gonna mind it not until I clawed out his remaining four sets of eyes. And indeed, I did just that, and Crab Octomate was left with nothing, but just empty sockets, and was now totally blind. Both of us were bleeding so much from the wounds we had cut into each other, and so sharks had smelled the blood, and innumerable of them had quickly swum to the scene. I just had to swim away, and left blind Crab Octomate being torn to pieces by the sharks, and even though he tried swinging his vicious tentacles all about but the sharks were so many, and given that he had not his sight, he didn't stand a chance. Some few sharks tried to chase after me, but they were no match for me, I put them to death with my deathly tentacles. I then swum away from the deep, and as much as I had hurt Crab Octomate, he also hurt me real bad, then I passed out just as I reached the ocean surface near Silent Island where the remaining mermaids of Mermaid Kingdom were, including the Mermaid King and Queen, and then Princess Mermaidron. When they saw my giant Crab Octomate-like body float up on the ocean surface, they quickly panicked thinking that Crab Octomate had found them again. But it was Princess Mermaidron who sensed that it was me, Sailor Christian. Don't be threatened, it's only Sailor Christian, she said to the others as she swung towards my Crab Octomate's scary, giant body. She looked and saw that I was badly hurt, blood was flowing out just like the first time she had encountered me on the other tiny island, only that this time, I wasn't in human form, but monster form, moreover Crab Octomate form. She shed tears, as with her great nature conversion power, turned me back to my Sailor Christian mermaid form. Did I change back? Yes, of course I did. The giant crab octomate body slowly reduced and reduced and finally reduced into me, Sailor Christian, even though I was super wounded. I mean almost all my body was covered in wounds, and I was so weak that I couldn't even open my mouth to speak, for my tongue felt as heavy as an iron slab. Princess Mermaidron, as she swung me to the shores of Silent Island, she screamed, saying, I need a mermaid doctor right now. But no one was responding. Didn't you hear me? I said I need a mermaid doctor. Sailor Christian is dying, she said as a river of real tears cascaded down her beautiful cheeks. 
Then some guard broke the bad news to her, saying, I'm sorry princess, but all the doctors are dead. She cried even more, knowing that there was no way I was ever going to survive without a mermaid doctor. But while everyone was there sad for their hero who had saved them from the monster crab Octomate, a little mermaid walked forwards. Princess Mermaidrin, I'm a mermaid doctor. But Princess Mermaidrin thought that the kid was only joking so she said, Honey, you just can't be serious. I know that you want us so much help but you're not a doctor. Besides, little mermaids don't discover their powers at your age. But the girl insisted that she had already discovered her power, and that she was a mermaid doctor, who had the healing power. She also claimed that she had healed a wounded fish down in Mermaid Kingdom, before the attack had happened. Princess Mermaidrin couldn't refuse that little mermaid, she left her swim through to where my wounded body was. The little mermaid brought her angelic small palms and I felt them on my shoulders. 30 to 40 seconds, nothing was happening, but just after a minute, the little mermaid's tail started glowing, and healing power flowed into me. Mist and light appeared from nowhere, and wrapped around me, and by the time they disappeared, my whole body was free of the deathly wounds, I was well again, and energetic. Just as they had doubted that little mermaid, she healed me, she saved my life. I carried her and threw her in my chest, hugging her so passionately. Everybody was so happy, so delighted, so overjoyed. Princess Mermaidrin walked towards me and gave me a big kiss, there was no doubt that she was in love with me, and there was no shadow of doubt that I too, was in love with her, the real, true, mermaid kind of love. I then said to them something that they were eagerly waiting to hear. Crab Octomate is dead. We can now swim back and rebuild Mermaid Kingdom. They wanted to bow before me once again, but I refused them, saying, Crab Octomate wasn't defeated by me, but Jesus Christ who was in me. And that's how I took the fame of Jesus Christ down into Mermaid World. And me and Princess Mermaidrin got married down there as mermaids. So that's how I saved Mermaid World, and that's how I married a Princess Mermaid. Look, earlier on in my human form, I was barren and couldn't have any kids, so my wife had cheated on me. But when Princess Mermaidrin converted me to a mermaid, and we got married, I'm no barren mermaid, I have four beautiful mermaid kids. I can't wait to learn what their powers are. Will they be as wise as their father, or be nature converters as their mother Princess Mermaidrin? Who knows, maybe there's an extra part in which we will find out all that but as for now, the end. Another original story from Migs Izo Novel Productions, written and conceived by Migs Izo. Edited by Maria Kirin. Migs Izo has written a plethora of short stories and series, and just to mention but a few. Linda McCain's Disappearance, The Mysterious Box, Death is Hunting My Girlfriend, Spying on Death, Is It a Ghost or an Angel, The Strange Deaths, The Strange Mark on My Head, The Ghost Village, The Portal to Darkness, Murder Revenge and the Grim Reaper, The Creepy Eight-Year-Old Girl, A Dark Night in the Manhole, Somebody is Killing Me, How I Became a Mermaid, Massacre in Mermaid Kingdom, Cloned by Evil, Midnight at the Cemetery, and so many more. You can reach him at migadisaac at gmail.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.